So this question came in to us and it said, please explain why sight is not an important criteria when selecting a diagnosis code for tuberculosis in lymph nodes. I was told that irrespective of whether the hilar mediastinal or the tracheobronchial lymph nodes are affected by TB, you would submit the ICD-10 CM code I15.4. First, we're going to be discussing a little bit about tuberculosis or TB uh, from a clinical standpoint as far as how it's uh, transmitted some of the symptoms that's involved and some of those tests that can be done before we get into the coding part of this topic. So TB is caused by the bacteria or the disease, mycobacterium tuberculosis. And most of this, this is an air droplet. Um, so you, you get a lot of this during your OSA training or your bloodborne pathogen training if you're in a facility or an organization. Um, and it's important that Oh, that one of the important things about tuberculosis is that, like I said already, it can be spread via air droplet. And so that's why if a facility, when the facility has a tuberculosis room where they put patients that have been diagnosed with tuberculosis, those rooms in and of itself have its own ventilation system. It has to have its own separate thing from the ventilation throughout the rest of the hospital. Otherwise, there would be a lot of issues with more people coming down with tuberculosis. And some of the symptoms that you see of TB include cough, and a lot of this will happen over a period of a few weeks. Um, now, some of this you can you get from a yearly TB test if you work at a facility. Um, most people that uh, most organizations facilities require that if you have some kind of patient interaction or do some kind of interaction within the organization or the hospital, that you get tested for TB on your annual basis to make sure that you're okay. It's just more of a risk management um, concern of the facility so that, that if you do have it, that you're going to be able to get treated. In most states, it's one of those conditions and that's reportable to the health department. Now, some other symptoms that you may see of this condition is fever, night sweats, and weight loss. Um, now, the important thing here is the unexplained, so it's not dealing with if you're working on, you know, a diet or anything like that. It's just all of a sudden, and sometimes it can be drastic as well. Um, so, not only does the site important, but even where the location of that infection is can impact uh, how uh, that disease infects or how it can spread throughout the body. But it's still more of in that respiratory area or the chest area. So if we can scroll down just a little bit to the next page. Um, here, the, in the question, it stated that no matter where, where the site is, that you were to code A15.4. Now, if you look up the code A15.4, um, or even the 9, you will see that it's just the, the unspecified, so it's more of that uh, kind of like the umbrella term. So you see you have TB, it's kind of like that CRPD where it's just an umbrella term where you have many others under it. Um, so here you would look at it um, and if you can scroll down, we'll see more that if you look if or the provider documents more specificity as far as the type or the location of the um, the tuberculosis where it's happening, in the, especially within the lymph node, as you can see um, that even the tuberculosis or, or that unspecified code refers to only in the respiratory area. Now in that scenario it presented to us, it said the lymph node, so obviously that's a different track or a different pathway you want to go down. And so that's when you look up the lymph nodes dealing with tuberculosis and you can see all the varieties of different um, of the different sites that can be located. But if you can scroll up a little bit, you can see what I said, A15.4. So here you have those the lymph nodes, the bronchiole, 
the hyler, the intro, uh, intrathoracic, the mediastinal, and as well as the tracheal bronchus. So all of those are included in that 815.4. So that could be a reason why that person may have heard that you wish to code 815.4, but I wouldn't use that as an all case basis because you need to support what is in that, or there needs to be supporting documentation in that record for the codes that are selected. Um, so obviously if, you know, if it's dealing with those abdominal lymph nodes, then that would be a different selection. It's more of that GI or as you can see, there's different segments as far as the A18 or A15 code categories. Um, so that's why you need to understand or the importance of specificity within documentation to really paint that patient picture. Um, and that's why I just wanted to show you some of those for um, tuberculosis as site is important. Um, um, for um, for coding this condition. Now, there were some questions regarding uh, for how these tests can be done. Um, some will do, you know, this that subcutaneous uh, injection that they do. Um, they ask, you know, if you, if you have different allergies to egg or something like that. But also, a lot of facilities have noticed that some of those will come back with false positives. So now they have come up with tests, you know, for x-rays looking at different nodules or things within the lungs, or they even notice that they're um, showing more results or um, a greater percentage of accuracy by using blood tests. Um, so a lot of more facilities are going more towards that blood test or chest x-ray, and usually chest x-ray sometimes they will use that more as to confirm um, that you have tuberculosis rather than that being the first test to go to as that's more costly than a blood drawn. Um, so working with providers, I find it to be really a wonderful experience, not only because my father was a, a physician, but just the engagement and the stuff that you learn from them. It is a great team effort. Um, it's not that I'm telling them what to do or how to practice medicine, how to take care of their patients, but it's how can we work together as a team to really reflect what takes place during that encounter so that, you know, the, what the, the provider does during that encounter is uh, supported in the documentation and they're paid for what they actually do. I mean, I've stated before in previous webinars that um, providers uh, know more about their patients, you can sit down and speak with them, yet the documentation doesn't really reflect what um, they, their knowledge of the patient is. And, and so that's why you work with them and um, really build that relationship with providers. Um, not only do you teach them on certain conditions or coding guidelines, but they also can teach you more about that clinical picture. Um, there are discrepancies or gaps between coding and clinical, um, you know, just based off of what they're taught in school and the different medical interventions um, compared to what we abide by in those coding guidelines. So it's about working together to really close those gaps um, so that we can appropriately, you know, uh, bill and for the providers to get reimbursed for those conditions or for those services rendered. Excellent stuff. You know, I remember recently, gosh, no, I guess it wasn't really, it was probably five years ago, but they had said the, um, one of the ladies was doing my hair. She goes, did you know they're not going to make hairdressers get TB tests anymore? I was like, what? They <laughs> because aren't, they anything aren't. where you can, they were not going to, uh, you know, when you went to beauty school, you weren't going to have to have a TB test. And I thought, golly, that doesn't sound good. They're breathing on you while they're washing your hair. Do you need more medical certification and business training? Learn more at www.cco.us.